In this video, I'd like to differentiate between competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. So here we have the enzyme and the substrate binds to the active site, which is shown right here. With the competitive inhibitor, the inhibitor resembles the substrate and thus it would be able to bind to the active site and thus block the binding of a substrate. So these are two features of competitive inhibitor. One, it resembles the substrate and two, it binds to the active site. Versus non-competitive inhibitor, it binds to a site different than the active site, and it doesn't have to resemble the substrate. The other features of competitive inhibitor is that it can be overcome by elevated substrate concentration. So if you increase the concentration of substrate, let's say if there is 1,000 to one ratio, then there is not much chance for the competitive inhibitor now to take this site. So you can still reach the Vmax or maximum function of the enzyme if you increase the substrate concentration. Versus non-competitive inhibitor, you, no matter how much you increase the concentration of the substrate, as the name implies, non-competitive. They do not compete with each other. So no matter how much you increase the concentration of the substrate, Vmax drops with non-competitive inhibitor. Now, one other factor you should know is KM, and KM is the concentration of a substrate that allows the enzyme to reach half the V max. So with the non-competitive inhibitor, KM remains constant, and I will explain that in a second. While with the competitive inhibitor, KM increases. So it means that you will need more concentration of the substrate to reach half of the Vmax. And so here I have a curve which allows me to describe the Vmax and KM changes with the non-competitive and competitive inhibitors. So here we have the black line with uninhibited enzyme, meaning that no inhibitor has been added. With a competitive inhibitor, you can see that we can still reach the Vmax. So Vmax remains constant. It doesn't drop. But the concentration of a drug or substrate that is needed to reach half the Vmax, which is right here, has increased from this side to this side. So there was this much increase in the concentration of a drug. So Km has increased. And one other factor was that in order to uh, reach the Vmax, we still had to use a lot higher uh, drug concentration. So Vmax can still be reached, but we need higher substrate concentration. Versus the non-competitive inhibitor, where no matter how much more substrate you add, the Vmax has dropped. And then KM, which is the concentration of a drug that allows to reach half the Vmax, is the same. So see, before adding the inhibitor and after the adding the inhibitor, the concentration of a drug that is needed to reach 50% of a Vmax has remained the same. So KM is therefore constant with the non-competitive inhibitor. And so since the Vmax has dropped, therefore there is decreased efficacy of this enzyme by the addition of non-competitive inhibitor. While with the competitive inhibitor, the Vmax is maintained. However, we need higher concentration of a drug. So therefore, there is decreased potency. And then one other way that they may present this graph on the exam is by 1 over velocity versus 1 over substrate. So on the exam, you may not have enough time to figure out which one is which. So here I've provided you with a memory aid. Just note that if here the black line is the uninhibited enzyme, with the competitive inhibitor, it's the one that crosses the uninhibited line. So competitive inhibitor crosses the black line, while non-competitive inhibitor does not cross. And then finally, I would like to fill this table with you. So with the competitive inhibitor, which we had here, does the substrate resemble the inhibitor or not? And the answer is yes. The substrate does resemble the um, inhibitor. So yes, while with the non-competitive inhibitor, the inhibitor and the substrate do not resemble each other. You can overcome the competitive inhibitor by increasing the substrate concentration, but not with the non-competitive. With the competitive, it does bind to the active site, while non-competitive binds to a site other than the active site. Vmax is not being affected by the competitive inhibitor, so here we can still reach the Vmax by increasing the substrate concentration, while with the non-competitive, Vmax has dropped. 
and then the Km has increased for competitive, so the concentration needed to reach half the Vmax has increased. While with the non-competitive, the concentration to reach half the Vmax has not increased. And then finally, competitive inhibitor decreases the potency, while non-competitive decreases the efficacy of the enzyme. And that concludes our discussion.